Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. Welcome to another book review. Today, I will be reviewing J.D. Salinger's Franny and Zooey. This came out in 1961. It was uh, the combination of two shorter works that came out in 1955, Franny, and 1957, Zooey, in The New Yorker. And so J.D. Salinger put them together into a book. And I read this uh, over the course of four days while traveling. It was recommended by one of my subscribers, Gabriel from France. So Gabriel, if you're listening, thank you very much for this recommendation. In this review, I will quickly talk about my feelings, my thoughts, some of the themes that I found very interesting. Um, also, who I would recommend it to. There may be a few minor spoilers, but hopefully nothing too drastic. So it starts off with the story of Franny. Franny is arriving to meet her lover. She is a college student. She is a drama major, and she is meeting her academically inclined boyfriend who she's been corresponding with very uh, endearing love letters and he's excited to meet her. But when they meet, things do not go really as either one of them planned. Her boyfriend, I believe his name is Lane, takes her to this nice restaurant. And his whole, his whole interest in Franny is perhaps not necessarily in who Franny is as a person, not in her beliefs, not in her ideas, but just because Franny is um, very attractive. And Franny is attractive in a certain way. She's not, she's not, cliche attractive in the sense that uh, she's too proper. She, Lane, Franny's boyfriend, feels that, that Franny being seen with Franny at a nice restaurant will sort of elevate him in the social hierarchy of the college scene or university scene where he's living. So we, we quickly see that Lane is trying to make sure everything goes perfectly. He's very excited to meet Franny. He's waited on the train platform. Uh, the book kind of pulled me in right away. I really enjoyed going into uh, how Lane felt about meeting Franny, reading the letter, the little interactions he was having with, with various men he was meeting on the platform. Then when he meets Franny and they get in a cab and they go to this restaurant um, and Franny's doubting already how this trip is going to go. She's questioning Lane's choice of hotel that she's going to stay at, uh, activities they're, they're going. So we already have a little bit of conflict. We have this, this very, uh, you know, a, this very normal event that we all have reuniting with one of our loved ones. Um, and all of the, the various uh, internal dialogue that we might have with ourselves going through it. So if I meet a girl that I, I'm i quite fond of, or perhaps even uh, really almost in love or in love, there's always these doubts, these, these thoughts that creep up, or even though I'm in love with that person, they do something that bothers me. So I really enjoyed uh, this particular situation. They go to the restaurant, and at the restaurant, that's really where, so I guess I'm spoiling this a little bit. Uh, I apologize. But even a little spoiling of the plot, I do believe, will not ruin your experience reading this because the book is not necessarily about the plot. It's much more about, um, well, I'll get to that later. It's much more of the deep undercurrent themes and philosophy that sort of gets, uh, gets exemplified and uh, shown in this fantastic uh, little read. So they go to the restaurant and their, their compatibility, their thoughts, their plans, uh, you know, their expectations for how this weekend would go quickly unravels. And it gets to a pretty desperate scene towards the end. I won't spoil it any further, but Franny realizes that there's this sort of split between her, between this persona side that Lane expects of her and perhaps society at large expects of her how to act, how to behave, what to say and what not to say, how to eat, when to eat, what to eat, and then how she really feels inside. I really enjoyed this internal, the, the, I, both the internal dialogue of Franny as she's having this uh, lunch or dinner with her boyfriend Lane as well as her actions, it is so marvelous. If you have ever, 
have, if you have ever been a self-critical person who's always trying to be perfect, always trying to impress people, but at the same time you have a voice inside that says you're not being authentic, then you will enjoy this book. Um, I really like that part. It's a short story, Franny. Then it goes to Zooey. Zooey is Franny's older brother. They are part of, I believe, seven siblings, a uh, couple which are dead, that are mentioned. Um, a couple who make their presence felt a little more in the story. All of these children have grown up as sort of extra precocious kids uh, that have been in the public for this certain radio show where they went on and they stunned the audiences by how intelligent, how well educated, how perfect their memories were. Um, so there's always in this background that they are not normal children. They were not raised normal. Now Franny and Zooey, being the youngest, were uh, had sort of a, a very special education from their genius older brothers, um, and one of them which committed suicide. This is a very interesting theme. If you have ever had someone very close in your life who has committed suicide, how Franny and Zooey and the rest of the family treats that person. Um, as well as another guy, a uh, younger brother who was very close to the brother who committed suicide, the second oldest. Uh, and he has a a letter which he writes Zooey. This is actually the opening part of Zooey where he is in the bathtub. And I think J.D. Salinger does a fantastic job of describing this bathtub reading of this letter because uh, if you're someone who likes baths and you sometimes uh, make it a little messy or sloppy, then you will really enjoy Zooey's bathtub read. Um, he reads this letter from his second oldest brother again and again, and um, it uh, sort of sets the stage for who Zooey and who Franny are and some of the problems that they might have based on their education. They were raised reading very religious books, uh, very deep philosophical works at a very young age, um, quite before most normal people would ever think about these things. And Zooey is a successful actor. He's got all of these little things on the side uh, that he's thinking about, that he's worrying about. His mother comes in. If you're someone who has a mother who both delights you, frightens you, and annoys the hell out of you, then you will really enjoy Zooey's interactions with his mother uh, and what he calls her, the sobriquets, and uh, the way he looks at her, the way they interact. Fantastic. She is a marvelous character who makes her way in and out of this second part. Um, and while she's talking to her son, who wants her to get the fuck out of there, excuse my language, um, he does get pretty explicit with his mom. Uh, in very humorous ways, might I add. Uh, she informs him that she's really worried about Franny, his younger sister, the youngest of the seven, and would love for him to help her with this situation. So the rest of the this second part, Zooey, is basically Zooey dealing with the problem of Franny. And so he has a conversation with her, uh, and I won't spoil exactly how it goes. I will just say that um, if you've ever had a sibling who you have very real conversations with who knows you very well, but is all, and so you love them, you perk your ears up, your heart is open, but at the same time, they can hurt you more than anyone. Um, but they might also have something to say to you, as painful as it might be, someone who might also annoy you. Uh, then I think you will enjoy their conversation and, and their banter and their, uh, their love, but also their, their conflict. Um, this was a very nice uh, section to read and a very painful section to read because you really do feel for Franny. She is going through a spiritual crisis. She has this conflict, as I mentioned earlier, between what society expects of her and, and who society is. She complains about the superficial professors and audiences, uh, and she just wants to quit. She wants to quit the world because the world is not good enough for her. She was raised on very high ideals, spiritual, psychological, philosophical ideals, and the world she is encountering is just, it's just uh, fake, it's vulgar, um, and it's, it's, not, it's not real. Not real like the characters and, and the heroes 
that that she was raised to uh, imitate. Um, and so Zoo is trying to, and and she's not wrong. Zoo is not saying you're wrong. You know, he's not saying, but he is saying that you're wrong on one point. And I won't spoil that point, but it's a very interesting point. Throughout this conversation, Zooey at one point goes into his uh, deceased eldest brother who committed suicide. The feeling of of going into his brother's room, uh, if you've ever had someone who's just passed away, you know, there's sort of a, 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 a sacred feeling when you handle memorabilia or pictures of that person. Um, but there's also uh, some some insight and emotional power to be gained from going into that into that uh in sort of that grave-like sacred space um there jd salinger introduces some quotes uh that he discovers in his brother's room quotes uh, which i found very amazing i highlighted all of the quotes from various philosophical and uh thinkers as well as writers famous people, most some that which you've heard of, and some perhaps which you haven't, um, that sort of give you an insight into how, how they were raised, on what values. And it was just so beautiful. Um, and he goes back out and tries to handle his sister. So he basically has two dialogues with his sister. Um, and I won't tell you how it ends, but there, there. If you've ever had an existential or a spiritual crisis, where you you had a hard time reconciling yourself with the world, uh, how you really feel, and how people expect you to act, authenticity versus um, performing your role in society, then I think you will enjoy J. D. Salinger's Franny and Zooey, which was published together as a book in 1961 from two shorter works, which came out in 1955, Franny, and 1957, Zooey. Okay, uh, I did, also I just wanted to mention, this was my first uh, work of J.D. Salinger that I have read. He is most famous for The Catcher in the Rye, which I never read. So uh, perhaps I'll get around to reading that sometime soon. Thank you for watching this book review. My name is Ryan. Put your comments down below and give me a thumbs up. Bye-bye.